Hi, Gloria Liebecker here with Healing You. Today I've been wondering, what light were you born to shine in our world? And more importantly, what is keeping you small? Hmm. Well, recently I had the experience of getting to spend time with a very powerful person. Powerful in the sense that their light is just so evident to me. Really destined to be an astonishing leader in our world. Someone that has grace and potential and humility and wisdom all rolled up in one. And do you know what I've noticed? We all have that potential in our own way. Unfortunately, for some of us, we experienced the sense that we are too harsh or we're too much when we're open in our expression. It may be that because of when we have expressed the way we perceive others' reactions to us really creates anxiety inside of us. And it's scary. We get worried that maybe we're seen as, um, maybe we're too bossy or we're too arrogant. We just know it all, <laughs> a big know it all. We just got a really big head. Who do we think we are anyway? Hmm. Maybe we're just too focused on the information that we're sharing. And that's what we're worried about. We're worried other people believe this about us. And maybe we are really worried that we're very unappealing. No one likes us. Nobody wants to be around us. You know, the worst case scenario could be if people really knew who we are, they would load us. That's like an abomination. You'd just be ostracized, cut off, completely and utterly alone in the world. Well, when I could touch into that, some of those stories, the default mode network, that inner chatter that we can have that just really can become vicious. It's trying to protect us. It's our own mechanism within to help us survive something that was unsurvivable. And so maybe your childhood was really scary and difficult. Maybe you needed to make sure that you weren't heard or seen. You had to be quiet as a little mouse in a corner, not to be detected. And it was terrifying. So you didn't dare to be seen, let alone heard or felt by another human. That's just unthinkable. Maybe then the, the storyboard inside when you were little was something like, maybe something's wrong with me. Am I a bad person? Nobody likes me. Why doesn't anyone like me? What is wrong with me? Hmm, I must stay small. I must stay small in order to survive. And I'm imagining that what we did unconsciously is we wrote an unconscious contract to our essential self. It might be something like, I, and I'll use myself as an example, I, Gloria Craig, which was my maiden name, solemnly swear to my essential self that I will stay very small, I will be invisible, in order to not attract any attention from others so that I can survive and exist in this life, no matter the cost to myself or those I love. Well, actually for me, that feels really true. 
And it's a little bit of a surprise because, you know, in my own way, I am a leader in my world and I have taken a lot of time to be with my, my inner children, with my heart, with my felt sense of who I have been born to be in this world. And I'm discovering there's, there's different layers and different flavors of our life experience that really need to be caught with gentleness and self-compassion. So it's like, well, no wonder you shut down. You shut yourself down because it was a necessity. It's all that your little one could even come up with to protect you. And I want to honor that. And at the same time, I want to slow down and come into my heart space and allow my essential self, you know, my spirit to shine with gentleness and warm, loving attention. And so I shift my body and I check in with my essential self. You know, essential self is a warrior. Did you hear that contract that Luke William made to you? <sighs> yeah, I heard that. No, it's not life serving. So I want to extend to this little part of myself, little Gloria, I release you from this contract and I revoke this vow. Hmm. I give you my blessing instead. I give you my blessing to shine as brightly as you do. I bless you with the capacity to hmm, resource yourself from spirit. To have the capacity through relationships with life to calm and soothe your nervous system so that you can be who you really were created to be, who you are created to be. For there to be compassionate understanding and discernment in expression with others and also in receiving the expression of others. Oh, and that feels, I just feel like a wave of warmth come over me. And what a nice little surprise for me today. And so coming back to this, hmm, this experience that many of us have had in our lives, it's really possible to be welcomed in relationships with others. And it feels very different from that fear of, Maybe something's wrong with me and I'm going to be ostracized or I'm too much. I'm either too much or I'm not enough. And the difference of that it's possible to be welcomed as you are, not even just welcomed as you are, but you're celebrated because of how you express in the world. There's nobody else like you. What a gift you are. And then people are actually interested they're very interested with, they're authentically interested in what you have to say and in how you say it. They're attracted to you. They're attracted to your authenticity and your transparency. Because you dare to be who you really are. You know, you don't have to put on a mask. You don't have to be someone you, you are not. You dare to be who you truly are in this world. And it's amazing to allow your inner light to shine brightly or to be a soft glow when that is what you perceive and discern is, is needed in the moment. And you can actually celebrate with others and be grateful for the gifts that have been bestowed upon you because you have come here to share them freely, to extend grace, and empowerment in our world. And how is this possible? How can we get from that place where we're just so believing we're either too much or too little? Well, I wanna invite you to, to begin to practice noticing where does your body feel relaxed? That's a big first step. When are you relaxed? It could be when you're out in nature it could be when you're out walking or hiking, um, maybe riding a bike. What is it that you enjoy doing and maybe even slow down to remember when you were a child? What did you love to do when you could have a moment all to yourself? 
And that can be a key to restoring and reclaiming who you really are. And, and then through that pathway, following that golden strand of your heart, you can begin to build a firm foundation of trust from the inside out. Because when we're seeking trust, it's truly in here that we need to build that, that self-trust. And it's also true that we need others in our life to reflect that back to us so we can actually get to know who we truly are. Reclaim the leader that you were born to be because you are a light in our world and you matter. Yeah. So if this catches even a little bit of your experience in life, then I want you to be willing to reach out to me at healingyoursanctuary.com. There's a preview of my course, The Healing You Method Intensive, that's all about this healing work, this journey. And to be able to be on this journey with others where you can explore and discover your light. There's an application on the last page. You fill that out and it comes straight to me. And I look forward to welcoming you. Thanks for being on this journey with me today. Healing you.